Marvin Goodfriend, Carnegie Mellon University, Jeffrey Sachs, uh, Columbia University. Thrilled to have both of you here. Bring up the nominal GDP chart right now. This is a debate right now. This will be the debate at the IMF here in a week or so. Animal spirits south of trend. This just happens to be the U.S. And Marvin, we regressed back 20 years or so on a, a gradually lower nominal GDP. We plunge down, we come back, and we've rolled over. Marvin, good friend, if we induce mm -hmm. a little bit of inflation into the debate, can we get the inflation genie back in the bottle later? Uh, I'm, for one, I'm one who lived through the uh, period of the great inflation, through the great moderation to the current period. I'm a little nervous about in deliberately uh, putting inflation back into the system. The question that the Fed is, I think, uh, dealing with now is how to treat the inflation consequences of more stimulus. Are they willing to tolerate or risk it, um, or are they aiming to target higher inflation? We just don't know. How far apart are Charles Plosser and Janet Yellen? I would say quite far apart, although on this point, I don't know whether Janet is, is, would be interested in targeting deliberately higher inflation or simply willing to risk it. And I think that's the key decision. The markets will be wondering what the Fed's intentions are with respect to inflation. There are different views about how inflation would help the economy. And we need, maybe you and I should get into that, but that's the critical thing. We just don't know. We, we don't know. There's a mystery to this. Arthur Burns, uh, for years at Columbia, the pipe smoking, and there was a rhetoric, there was a policy, but there was also a mystery to Fed. Jeff Sachs, is there too much communication today? A Fed but, policy? I think the real question is uh, we don't really know whether the Fed has any more uh, ammunition that is uh, particularly useful at this point. Uh, they've pushed twice on quantitative easing. It didn't really do, do much. Uh, they probably did save the world from collapse by opening up the spigots after Lehman. Uh, that was the lender of last resort. But in terms of really getting this economy going again, whether fiscal policy or monetary policy actually can do much is, is the question please that's ask, most important. Please ask a question of Professor Goodfriend. Well, uh, Marvin, what do you think about that? Do you think that there really is uh, any macro ammo? Do you think we face more structural problems? Uh, how do you view uh, the, the macro debate right now? Well, my, my main concern um, is with the things the Fed, I believe, can accomplish and ought to accomplish and ne need to accomplish to prevent this thing from getting even worse. The Fed needs to make, make sure that we don't, that this, this downturn doesn't slide into a deflation. Just as much as it needs to prevent, in my opinion, inflation, it needs to prevent deflation. So, and there's no question in my mind that the Fed can do that if it needs to by going to Q3 and, and, and printing more money. But my feeling is the Fed shouldn't be premature about that, that it should wait to see whether this slowdown develops into a more serious contraction and whether disinflation develops into an incipient deflation before it acts. If it acts prematurely, I'm afraid that markets will, 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 will infer that the Fed is trying to inflate the economy, perhaps right. in order to def deflate the real value of the public debt as a way of getting us out of a debt overhang problem. And I think that would cause long-term bond rates to start spiking up, and that would be an utter disaster for what we have and, at the and, moment. And this, folks, is a key, key distinction here. All these economists come on the show, and you hear different shades. This is the common ground that Jeffrey Sachs has with Marvin Goodfriend about our fiscal policy and then linking it into the simplistic stuff I talk about every day. I want to review this again. Can the Fed do fiscal policy? Well, uh, the, the Fed can finance uh, budget deficits uh, by essentially creating money. Uh, in that sense, that, whether that's monetary or fiscal policy, that's how you ultimately get high inflations if it comes to that. The Fed, most importantly, needs to keep the financial system liquid, uh, needs to prevent a, a, a collapse of uh, a debt deflation the spiral. Debt. Marvin, would you agree they've succeeded at that? Succeeded in, in, in preventing a collapse. keeping the banking system going, helping well, it heal and repair. Well, in the, in the moment of the crisis, there's no question that the Fed back in 2008 and, and, and before that, I think, did succeed in, 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 in nipping in the bud what would have developed into a more serious crisis. But on the other hand, the Fed also contributed to that crisis by Absolutely. essentially carrying the water for the Treasury from 2007, August, all the way down to 2008, September, when the AIG yeah. intervention caused the Fed to get out of the business of, 
a fiscal, openly using the Fed for a fiscal policy substitute for Congress. So the handoff from the Fed to the, to the Congress in September of 2008 was a disaster. I would have wanted the Fed, after the, after the, the Bear Stearns interventions, to acknowledge that it did a, a, a fiscal action that it really was not author, authorized to do. It should have right. made the handoff at that point. Oh, Jeff Sachs, here's a Marvin Goodfriend chart. He's great over this chart. There's a photo of him at the Richmond Fed. Mm -hmm. He was less gray <laughs> before the crisis. Here's the chart, <laughs> okay. and it's the Fed. Uh, to, you can put your glasses yeah, on. Glasses yeah, no, are big on the show, that, but I know, I know what that graph is. Glasses are big is. on the show. <laughs> All right. Okay, Fed to the fiscal rescue. Our yeah. cameramen are blind, so it's okay. Fed to the fiscal rescue, and here's this. Marvin knows this chart, and this risk of independent Fed. How does uh, someone in another part of economics like you look at this chart of my monetary policy and balance sheet expansion. Well, I think the Fed uh, failed not only in 2007 to 2008, as Marvin said, but I think it failed for the decade beforehand because it basically uh, failed in regulation, in oversight, in understanding the housing bubble, uh, and it, it created a tremendous amount of mm -hmm. liquidity in my view, misjudged the whole world economy under Greenspan. Is that a fair criticism, Marvin? You were with the Richmond Fed for years. No. Is it a criticism that they missed yeah. the no. housing crisis? No, I, right. I sat behind Alan Greenspan from 1993 to 2005. Uh, and I would say, on the whole, he was a, a very fine Fed chairman. I also think it's unfair to criticize the Fed um, uh, for housing the housing bubble because Chairman Greenspan, time and time again, and other presidents of Federal Reserve Banks were made statements warning about Fannie and Freddie, the housing authorities, just stoking the fires of the housing bubble, and the Congress did not listen. So on, on you know, laying at the, uh, at the Fed's feet, the housing bubble, I think, is too far, too much, way too much. The Congress knew what it was doing. The Fed, high Fed officials told the Congress to, to rein in Fannie and Freddie. Right. It didn't happen, and that was the problem, in my opinion. Marvin, never enough time. There's a point of disagreement between Sachs and Goodfriend. Marvin Goodfriend of Carnegie Mellon University.